Hola, hola. Hola, buenos días. Hola, Vero, hola, buenos, días. buenos días. Hola, buenos días. Buenos días. Hi. Hello, good morning. Hi. Hi, good morning. Hi, You're good welcome. Morning. <laughs> okay. Um, if you want, we can wait uh, five more minutes, if it's okay for you. And the first step will be to um, rename, please, your status. Favor de renombrarse, por favor, para identificarlos. Um, es importante que mantengamos las, cama, las cámaras apagadas, ¿verdad? It's important that we keep our cameras off, right? Yes. Sí. Great. Wonderful. Hi, good morning. Uh, you can hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Okay. Yes, hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be your technical support coordinator for your session in this important event. I'm going to read some instruction. If you have any question, I just to ask them at the end. Yes, please? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. The first is the instruction is rename the Zoom profile with your name and country. Example, Anna Smith, um, Mexico. Yes, are you ready? Okay. Um, the second instruction is keep your camera uh, on and microphone off until the moment of your participation, please. Um, does this apply for panelists as well? Should they not keep their camera on the whole time? Only, only a coordinator. Um, ah, yes, the, the panelists, yes, they keep our camera on the microphone. Yeah, it's important that uh, now all the panelists has 
uh, the camera on and microphone on because we are going to test exactly. Thank you. Hi, um, Hi, how are you? Uh, how are you? Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. It's a real pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. Okay, so a quick question. So will you assign us as Google points uh, to be co-hosts? Uh, not host but uh, if you want to share some documents or video no uh, we want to be co-host because we want to see also the questions ah, and, the in questions. Case is, and in case there is something that we need to answer urgently so we can intervene as as co-hosts okay just a minute please thank you sorry for who for Nesrina and Emilia ah okay Nesrina yes I can see the question and answer. Yeah, you can do it. Okay. I can see it. Okay. So I can move. Yeah, I can see. Just a minute, please. Equipo técnico. Podremos eh, darle el control de o el co-host a Nasrin para que pueda eh, pre eh, ver preguntas y contestar, por favor. Y a mí también, por favor, a Emilia. Eh, yo Emilia también. Supongo que también para la, las moderadoras, eh, para la moderadora de chat, para que podamos ver las preguntas y contestar, por favor. Eh, una ¿Cuál pregunta. es su nombre? Lourdes, L Lumont. Next. Ah, Lumont. Habían, habían confirmado el día de ayer que eh, las pre, preguntas y respuestas, <coughs> perdón, iban a estar habilitadas 30 minutos antes de que terminara la sesión. Esto para avisarle al técnico. Sí, así es. Sí, ok, correcto. Como tal, no se pueden deshabilitar, pero se pueden esconder. No, okay. Ah, ok, perfecto. Sí, o sea, eh, si siguen comentando, si siguen haciendo preguntas y comentando, ya nadie las va a poder ver. No, o sea, lo, sí que, lo que queremos es que solo se abra la última media hora. Ah, ok. Entonces, eh, lo vamos a esconder. Una, si alguien hace preguntas ahorita, la audiencia no va a poderlo ver. Pero hay Solamente manera es... de, de deshabilitar. No hay manera de deshabilitarlo. Ok. En ningún momento... Técnico, ¿En ningún momento la audiencia ve las preguntas? La audiencia sí ve las preguntas, eh, solo como se les explicó ayer, este, ustedes tienen que descartar estas preguntas para que la audiencia no las vea. En caso de que ustedes eh, indiquen que esta pregunta o no quieren que la vea el público, pero si no, sí las ven. Ah, okay. Hola, tengo la mano levantada porque quiero preguntar, ayer sí podía yo cambiar la interpretación de, para la traducción. Ahorita no encuentro la el, el aplicación, no está en mi pantalla. En la parte de abajo, eh, buenos días. Eh, hay ¿Interpretación? Un, exacto, un circulito. Ajá. Interpretación, pero esta interpretación empezará cuando la sesión empiece. Ok. Aún todavía no tenemos. Ya. Muchas gracias. A ustedes. Okay, colleagues, so, so do we have the interpreters now with us or they didn't join yet? No, we will have interpreters, but uh, when the session starts, not now. Okay, so we, they will not join a little bit earlier because in other sessions, the interpretation started three very late. Three minutes earlier. Three oh. minutes earlier. Only yes. three minutes? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so can you please make me co-host because I I, I, didn't, I can't see myself co-host. Can I identify you, please? 
Wait a minute, please. Podemos hacer co-host a Nasri, por favor. Hola, buenos días. Los que no se han... Thank you. You're welcome. Me, técnicos, ¿me pueden bajar, por favor, a espectador para hacer preguntas? We will test the Q&A. I will ask something uh, in the in the Q&A and you can practice. Excuse me, the interruption. Can you say me again the name that you have to be a spectator? El nombre de qué, perdón? El nombre de la persona que recién se vuelve espectador. Ah, yo, Berenice, Berenice, perdóname, Berenice. So Verenice, what is the difference between answer live and the type answer? Hola, ¿podría hablar con Emilia? Soy Hola. Tarsila, soy Hola, Tarsila. Tarsila, Tarsila Rivera. Hola, ¿cómo eh, está? ¿Qué tal? Buen día. Andamos Buen día. angustiadísimos con todo lo que hay que cliquear, pero qué sí. bueno que envió esta mañana, fue muy fácil. Este, tengo una duda, querida Emilia. Tenemos... Tres a cuatro minutos en total por panelista, ¿verdad? Así es. Ya. Yeah. Son tres preguntas las nuestras, pero vamos a seguir la ruta que haga la moderadora. Exacto. ¿Es verdad? Exacto. Yeah, porque... Bueno, son preguntas guía y la moderadora sí. va a hacer su ruta, pero en general son tres a cuatro minutos. Entre el tercer y cuarto minuto creo que les van a recordar que ya se va a acabar el tiempo de eh, hablar. Ya, perfecto. Entonces, sí. estamos en la prueba. Yo quería, entré para probar, para no enredarme. Y, y entramos, eh, de todas maneras, entramos media hora antes. O sea, me tocaría en, porque en este momento aquí son 10 y 15, ya que tenemos una hora de diferencia con México. Sí. Ya. Sí, sí. Eh, bueno, entonces, lo que usted necesita saber para esta sesión es nada más eh, que a la hora de que empiece el panel eh, mm. tendrá que prender la cámara y mantener el micrófono apagado a menos de que esté um, usted hablando. De que me toque hablar. Perfecto, querida. Y yeah. co con que usted mantenga eh, la cámara prendida, saldrá mm. en, el, en el panel. Ya. Yeah. 
Este, bueno, ahora estamos en prueba. Yo me, me retiro un ratito. Ya sé que sí. funciona todo perfecto. Estuve perfecto. queriendo a la, entrar a la plenaria y a otros lados, pero se complica porque no sé dónde estará el no sé qué. Mm. Y entonces, pero, pero esta ayuda que nos mandó nos facilitó perfectamente. Así que muchas gracias, Emilia. No, de nada. Y cualquier otra cosa, si necesita que chequemos su registro para el foro y cualquier otra cosa, lo podemos hacer. Mira, por favor, entonces, yo estoy inscrita para el foro y yo quisiera tener la posibilidad simple de entrar a algunas eh, de las otras, algunos de los otros paneles para escuchar. Uh -huh. claro. Porque son bien interesantes, ¿no? Y no, no, no encontraba la ruta, porque hasta donde fui con las indicaciones del, del foro, eh, no pasa nada. ¿No ha tenido acceso a la plataforma todavía? Eh, entré a la plenaria para, en, para escuchar, pero no me aceptó, este, no me sale nada como para, para poner mi, mi correo o mi nombre Ajá. para que me abran a la conferencia. O sea, me quedo en la página, en la sala principal. Ok, bueno, eso lo podemos checar para verificar que sí, es, sí esté bien su conexión para que pueda entrar a los otros paneles. Sí. Bueno. Eh, ¿Podríamos checar nada más ahorita si funciona la conexión de su cámara para este panel? Aquí estoy. Ah, perfecto, qué bien. Qué gusto verla. Yo voy a cerrar bien esta parte. <risa> para que no se vea no feo. ¿Está bien? Así voy a estar. Perfecto, perfecto. Me ya. parece muy bien. Entonces... A ver, quiero verte, pues, Emilia. Quiero verte. ¿Ver? Hola, aquí estamos en, en, eh, en el, la sede del foro. Sí, porque tú eh, no eres la Emilia que conozco. Yo conozco a Emilia Reyes, ¿Eh? pero tú no, no eres... Pero no. También nos conocimos en eh, la reunión de agosto de 2019 de Mujeres Transformando. Sí, sí. Ah, sí, 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 sí. Bueno. Así es. O sea, bueno. nosotros ya trabajamos duro varias cosas, ¿no? Pero en fin, Así este, es. por eso es tan interesante escuchar todos los otros paneles porque hay mucha gente bien trome, ¿no? Bien de primer nivel. Y bueno, con el equipo también estamos siguiendo, ¿no? Hay otra persona que está siguiendo, sí, y me estaba diciendo que él entró fácil, etcétera. Porque... Y parece ser que ya para usted todo lo técnico quedó. Entonces... Eh... Mm. ¿Estamos listas? Si quieres bueno. salir y volver a entrar. Bueno, querida, gracias. Un abrazo, que nos vaya lindo. Sí, hasta pronto. Sí. Gracias. Chao. Hola, Humberto. Un favor, ¿puedes hacer a Berenice eh, panelista, por favor? Gracias. ¿Soporte técnico? ¿Me pueden repetir la indicación, por favor? Uh, ¿Puedes hacer a Berenice panelista, Berenice Hernández? Claro, listo. Gracias. Hello everyone, I come back. Do you have any other question about the Q&A? How it works or another doubt? Yes, so um, a quick question. So any question that will be posted in the chat it will not be seen to any one of the attendees unless it is validated by the chat moderators or the hosts, right? Right, exactly. Perfect, thank you. And I don't know if uh, someone is going to share some video or presentation and you want to try in this moment. Okay, we will be here if you need something okay. for the us. We will be here. Thank you.
And please uh, ask for the panelists that uh, open the camera and also the audio. Okay. Just to check that uh, they, they, they look uh, they looks good with uh, light. Uh, I don't know who it is, but the sound I'm it's good. The audio is good. Give me just two minutes. Perfect. So far, um, of the panelists, we had Tassila, who was here, and we checked her mic and, um, and camera, and it was good. And Kiteria, who uh, we see uh, your image is great. And we already checked your mic, right? Yes. Hello. OK, perfect. That seems great. Thank you. Thank you so um, much. So um, yep. so far, that's who we have.
Staff técnico, podemos subir a dos personas. Tenemos a Steven Becker y Mo 3 como panelistas, por favor. Está técnico, por favor, ¿me pueden ayudar a subir de espectador a panelista? Hello, welcome. Hey, how are you? Yes, you're 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 in the right room now. <laughs> yes, <laughs> how are you? Good. Yes, have you have you have you been watching? Do you watch the um, uh, the inauguration? We did. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> Great. So here we are. Um, I was just. Um, I was just wondering whether we could have the, the, the Q&A open just at the very beginning. And I, would, I, I have prepared something that I'm going to send you via WhatsApp. To welcome the participants, you mean? Yes. What, what yes. do you think about this? Let's see. Yeah, that's cool. If you want to add anything, then tenemos a Mari Carmen como espectador. Podemos subirla, de favor. Yeah, I think it's very nice. Okay. So as soon as uh, as soon as some someone puts a comment in, I can post this and just leave it at the top or something like this. I think it needs to be someone from the attendees. Yes, yeah, someone from the attendees will need to. Um, you know, say hello or something like this, something similar. Or I can, you know what, I, I might be able you can to sign up. from both uh, sides. Um, you know what, I can, I can probably join via my mobile phone as an attendee. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you you welcome yourself and then you reply yeah. to yourself. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just had this idea. Maybe that works. Mm -hmm. Tenemos a... Ah, gracias. Just for you, Steve, to, um, to read him and uh, to add the, the chat moderator to, um, to your name. Lourdes, no? Uh, no, I meant, yes, uh, the other chat moderator is Lourdes. I meant on, on the participants list, just to rename yourself. Um, right. Yes. And I still see some, uh, some colleagues not renaming them, themselves. Like AV2, Mod3. Rename. So, so, so for the colleagues who didn't rename themselves, I see Francis, I see staff, I see Mod3, Op Zoom. I think we need to all uh, rename ourselves so that it becomes consistent.
Sorry, uh, can I ask who is Moth 3? Could you please tell me who is Moth 3? ¿Me pueden decir quién es Moth 3, por favor? Sorry, the question was who is the moderator or who's the chat moderator? Uh, I think it's okay. Yeah, you're right. Maybe it's moderator. Okay, just to know who is. So, Shannon, call us. Hi, Shannon. Welcome. Um, Hi. Shannon is in and she's going to be the moderator for um, this thematic dialogue. Hi, Shannon. Welcome. Thank okay. you. Okay. If you will be moderator, do you need to be co-host? Uh, I don't think I need to be co-host. I'm just going to be calling on people to speak and providing some commentary. Um, so I don't think I need to be. Okay. I, I don't think I need to be. Okay, thank you. Shannon, can we um, just take a quick look to see if uh, the, your camera is working um, for this session really quickly? And Wina, you're, you're, um, you're a sure. chat moderator as well, right, Wina? How does this look? Yes, that looks great. Thank you. Great. I'm just going to run to the restroom before we start. So I'll be back in a moment. Yeah, no problem. Thanks. Podemos darle entrada a Karen, por favor? And we also have Francis, so... Francis is the it's French Karen interpreter. Wendy, Hello, ah, Karen. Okay. Welcome. So maybe I can just rename this because it, it looks sorry. like a person. <laughs> yes, yeah, sorry. Espanol, Francis, English. It's uh, our interpreters. It's the... okay, perfect. Hi, Karen. How are you? Hello. Can you hear me? I'm fine. Is it okay with the headset on? Is the sound okay? Yes, perfect. That sounds great. And your camera works as well. So thank Good. you very much. Good. I'll just do some other stuff. I'll be back uh, like 10 minutes before we start. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's perfect. Thank you very much. Great. Hello, everyone. Hello, welcome, Mercy. How are Mercy. you? Thank you, fine, and you? We're great, thank you, all set. Um, oh, yeah, there you are. So your camera works great, and so does your mic. So I think we're all set for you. Okay, Thank perfect. you very much. Just a question. I saw that you said we should write our country as well. Uh, I forgot that I only typed my name. Should I try to re-enter and then uh, write Karen Elliman dot Denmark? I can, do, I can do that for you, Karen, no worries. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, also, I just added my uh, my country, so um, I renamed myself. Great. Um, so if you are representing a government, um, you can add your country. If you want to add your organization as well, um, instead of a country, that's fine as well. Thank you.
Can I, hey, hello, can I ask a quick question? Um, in the chat function, so have we agreed now definitely that um, the Q&A function is only going to be open at the, uh, you know, the last 20 minutes of the panel? The last 30 minutes. So from what we've understood now, um, people will be able to post their questions the whole time, but they'll only be able to be seen. Uh, they'll only be able to be seen for the last 30 minutes. Exactly. So that'll give um, the chat moderator time to filter out the questions that have been uh, sent out, but also to filter out any messages that might be you know, offensive or, or anything of that sort. Right. So is it going to be open at the beginning for me and for um, Lourdes? Yes. Right, perfect. And um, another thing, Shannon, hi, nice to meet you. Um, would hi. you like, hi. <laughs> so Lourdes and I, we have been talking about how to identify the questions best and send them to you. Would you agree that we sent them to you privately via WhatsApp or do you prefer, or, 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 or is there any way that you would prefer to get the questions? WhatsApp is good. Um, Just to you. So, yes, that's perfect. Bye. That's perfect. Okay. Thank you. No worries. Yeah. Sorry, I, I didn't understand. Do you need a Q&A at the start of the, meet, of the session and then at the end of the session? No, no, no. We, we only want it to be open for the last 30 minutes, but you okay. told it, it, you yeah. said that uh, people will be asking questions throughout, yes? Exactly. Okay. But if it's not open at the beginning, they won't be able to send any questions. I don't know who is speaking. The audience can send us uh, questions, mm -hmm. but... Um, the other audience won't be that questions. Right. Just at the okay. end, just at the end of the right. session, okay, the I last understand. 30 minutes. Thanks a lot, thanks a lot. Sorry about that. No, no, no problem. Equipo técnico, ¿me escuchan? Vamos a esconder eh, preguntas y respuestas durante toda la sesión y los últimos 30 minutos lo vamos a poner visible. ¿Me confirman de favor? Gracias. De acuerdo, enterada, gracias. Gracias. Se cierra, muy bien. Sí. Se va a caer, se va a caer. Hola, buenos días. Cecilia Tacón, Secretaria de Derechos Humanos del Ecuador, les saluda. Buenos días. Hola, bienvenida. Qué gusto. Mucho gusto. Eh, ahí, ya, ahí me ven. Sí, perfecto. Qué gusto. Hola. 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 Ok, entonces podemos verificar que su micrófono sí funciona y también eh, la cámara. Sí, perfecto. Sí, sí. Muchas gracias. Bienvenida. Entonces, estaremos empezando en 15 minutos. Eh, cualquier duda o comentario, aquí estamos, los próximos 15 minutos. Gracias, buenos días. Muchas gracias.
Are all the panelists here now? Um, and I, th yet. I think that I we think are missing Monica Lemar. And Lopa. Uh, and Lopa, yeah. yeah. Okay. I just wanted to let you all know um, that in terms of the questions that you, I'm going to ask, um, I'm going to ask the second question um, or the last question first. So I'm going to ask each of you to talk about um, how from your own work, um, what has made feminist movements and grassroots organizations successful um, or impactful or powerful. Um, and if you sent me specific questions that you wanted me to ask you, I will ask you those questions. Um, then I'm going to open up a question to anybody who wants to answer it, which is the question about um, how can we build movements that are cohesive while at the same time representing the diverse demands that women have. Um, and then finally, I'm going to ask you each for one or two specific actions that governments, private sector and international funds should take to support the work of feminist groups and organizations. And then after that, I'm gonna open up to Q&A. Um, and if you could all be pretty short, we don't have a huge amount of time for the, the panel. We've got about an hour. Um, that, would be, that would be great so that we've got enough time to hear from everybody, but also have enough time at the end for the question and the answer um, session. Does that sound, um, sound good to you all? Uh, yes, yes, it is perfect. Okay, thank you. Okay, we will start in 10 minutes. We will run a countdown. And once the countdown ends, we will start. Okay, so one Do last question for any, all. Any panelists is missing? Yes, we're still missing Lopa Banerjee and Monica Leman. Um, but um, I'm sure they'll be in shortly. So one last direction for everyone who is a speaker, please um, turn on your camera and off your mic. And anyone who is not a speaker, please turn off your mic and off your camera. Cualquier persona que no sea participante o panelista, por favor, hay que apagar las cámaras ahora. Gracias. ¿Los intérpretes permanecen o las cámaras abiertas? Sí, 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 permanecen. Ellos. Gracias. Sí. Emilia, we have a LOPA as a as a invite. Yes, but, can you, um, ¿la puedes cambiar a, a panelista, por favor? Claro. Yes, LOPA is just going now. Uh, Perdón, los intérpretes... Uh, Cuando hace el cambio entre uno y otro, nosotros debemos encerrar la cámara o usted técnico hace eso? Nosotros nos podemos asegurar de hacer eso. Gracias. Hello, Lopa, welcome. Um, hello, Lopa. So I see that your camera is working fine. Can we just check your mic really quickly before we start? Lopa, can you hear me? Hi, Lopa, can you hear us? Good morning, Lopa and Shannon. Here is Tarsila. Nobody listening. <laughs> um, Berenice, ¿nos puedes ayudar a checar que Lopa sí nos puede escuchar, por favor? Sí, sí, sí. Sorry, apologies first. I'm really, really sorry. Lo siento, lo siento. The other panel was running uh, late. It's still overrunning, actually. I'm sorry about that. I hope you can hear me and see me. I can hear you and see you. Wonderful to see everybody. Great friends. 
Thank you, Lopa. Welcome. Yeah, it's no problem at all. So now we, can you hear me? Uh, perdón, perdón, no puede escuchar. Oh, sorry, Lopa. Um, can you hear me now? A little bit better, but uh, uh, I've got you on the English uh, channel. Is that correct? Yes, I'm on English. Yeah. Okay. Nisreen, okay. can you yeah. try to uh, speak, Nisreen, to see if it's my, um, it might no, just I be my microphone. I can hear okay, you perfect. now. Perfect. So I can we can hear you as well. Great. So then Lopa, your camera works and your microphone works. So we're all set for you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be starting in eight minutes. So um, all, all speakers, if you can keep your cameras on and your microphones off, unless you're speaking. Thank you very much. Shannon, just. Hi, Lopa. Hi, sorry, Shannon. I, I uh, just to let you know that I will need to leave a little early because I'm moderating another panel. So that's I fine. will leave a little early. It's back to back. That's that's fine, Lopa. And just so you know, I'm going to ask you the first question. Okay. I'm, I'm planning to ask you the first question. Um, so I think you, you have the opportunity to go first and then um, I, I, I just explained to everybody else that I'm going to ask um, questions. Well, my question for you is from your position working with feminist and women's rights movements around the world, you have a bird's eye view. I wanted to ask you what you see that makes feminist movements powerful and what do we gain and what do we lose if feminist movements are not part of the mix? So that's the first question I have for you. Then I'm going to ask a question for anybody who wants to answer it about this um, whole idea of um, building cohesive feminist movements while at the same time rep representing the diverse demands that women have. Um, you don't have to answer that one if you don't want to. And then the, the last question would be, um, you know, what should UN women be doing to support the work of feminist groups and, and organizations? Um, so that's, that's essentially what I have planned for you. Thank you, Shannon. Perfect. Thanks. Dear panelists, can you kindly prepare and just uh, open your cameras so that when the countdown um, finishes, you, your photos can be displayed uh, on the panelists' window? Thank you. Uh, sorry, we... Uh, nosotros que hacemos la interpretación de señal internacional, Uh, no uh, estamos escuchando en español, ¿es correcto? Por, por en cuanto, por este momento. Necesitamos, necesitamos escuchar en español, nosotros intérpretes. Bueno, yo soy Tarsila y voy a hablar en español. Sí, yo también. Sí. Buenos días con todas. Buenos días, Hola, Tarsila. Buenos Me días. llamo Ángela. Estaré haciendo el trabajo junto con Marcelo que usted puede ver en la pantalla, ¿ok? Sí. Ok. Marcelo Gracias a los es dos también. Marcelo es intérprete sordo. Y yo estoy haciendo el fit para él en señas internacionales. Nos pedimos para que todos puedan hablar despacio para que podamos hacer un bellísimo trabajo todos nosotros, ¿ah? ¿eh? Perfecto. Gracias. Las indicaciones. Gracias. 
Mucho gusto, Cecilia. Hola, Tarcita, qué Cecilia, gusto sí. saludarle. Qué gusto. A todas qué también, gusto. buenos días. Quiteria, Shannon, y nos falta Mónica, ¿no? Lopa está. Ok, we will start in three minutes. Gracias. Perfecto, gracias. Escuchamos perfectamente. Se escucha bien, gracias.
Hello, everybody. My name is Shannon Kowalski. I'm the Director of Advocacy and Policy for the International Women's Health Coalition and have been honored to be a participant in the Civil Society Advisory Group for the Generation Equality Forums. It's so exciting to be here with you today. Um, but first off, I wanted to let you know that interpretation is available in English, Spanish, French, and Arabic, as well as sign language. Please click on the globe on the bottom right of your screen in order to choose your channel. Um, our panelists today will be speaking in Spanish and in English. Um, so we're here this morning to discuss the critical importance of feminist movements in driving progress for gender equality, the challenges we face and the creative solutions that we're using to overcome them. As feminists advocating for change, we know that our movements are critical in driving social change. Los interpretes no escuchan español, por favor. Uh, is there a problem? No tenemos español. Uh, we do not have Spanish interpretation. Por favor, pueden ver. No okay. se oye el español. Is it working, Tarsila? No Spanish. Is Spanish is mute. Okay, uh, can I get an indication from somebody whether we can fix that? Yes, uh, so we're working on it. Tarsila y todo el mundo en español. Eh, estamos trabajando esto y eh, lo resolveremos en un segundo. So Shannon, we're working on it. Um, if you can just give us a second, we can give you an indication. Apologies. Thanks, Amelia. No problem. Con tal que no sea mi computadora. <laughs> no, interpretation is critical. We are always suffering <laughs> because the connection, the connection is like ice <laughs> or the other case fall down. So for those who are just joining, we're just waiting to fix an interpretation issue and then we'll get back to the start of our panel. Entonces, solo dos hablamos español en este panel, ¿no? Yes. Okay. Sí. Finally, Shannon. Okay, Emilia, Loma. Emilia, can you can you kindly translate yes. until so, uh, this panel is here? I will be providing a translation. Uh, okay. Early until this is fixed. Okay, great. Thank you, Amelia. Great. So let's get back to it. Cut in um, quickly. We are here this morning to discuss the critical importance of feminist movements in driving progress for gender equality the challenges we face and the creative solutions that we're using to overcome them. So as estamos feminists... Aquí. Sorry, we are here to make a face to the obstacles that los que pasan los movimientos feministas y los pasos que a seguir adelante. As feminists advocating for change, we know that our movements are critical in driving social change for compelling governments to act and to holding them to account. Research. Como actores de cambio, sabemos que somos críticas Dios, para... No es simultáneo. It's not simultáneo. Apologies. Until the, until the problem is fixed uh, in the technical, um, with the technical team, I will be translating right after Shannon, if that's okay. Eh, Tarsila, en lo que 
en lo que resuelven este problema, vamos, voy yo a traducir después de Shannon, muy rápido. Okay. Research done over the past decades has shown clearly that the most significant driver of policy change on gender equality and women's rights is the presence of strong and autonomous women's and girls' movements. Eh, la, las investigaciones han mostrado que eh, el, el factor más importante para el cambio es eh, de, de, de las mujeres que, que hacen esta lucha. We've seen it time and again, from the green wave in Argentina to the repeal of the eighth cam campaign in Ireland, feminist civil society mobilization, not progressive political parties, women in government or national wealth are the key drivers of policy change. Lo hemos visto desde la marea verde hasta la campaña de repeal en Irlanda, eh, que los factores más importantes no son cambios de políticas públicas, sino los movimientos feministas. We also know that when women's organizations work together and in partnership with other progressive movements and sectors, that they're more successful in pushing change at a faster pace. Sabemos que cuando los movimientos feministas trabajan con otros sectores, son más efectivos para lograr el cambio. And this is the secret sauce that we're trying to unleash with the Generation Equality Forums and the Action Coalitions. Este es el ingrediente secreto que estamos tratando de catalizar con el Foro Generación Igualdad. Bringing together distinct partners around a common vision to make progress on gender equality and women's, girls, and gender diverse people's human rights irreversible. Y esto es lo que necesitamos para hacer el, la igualdad de género irreversible. But at this particular moment, the threats facing feminist movements globally are immense. En este momento particular, estamos en, en un, en un eh, es momento muy difícil. So we're seeing trends of restrictions on civil society organizing and funding. Estamos viendo eh, muchas restricciones y muchas olas de restricciones. The rise of anti-human rights movements globally that are confronting the work of feminist movement head on. Um, estamos viendo muchos movimientos de derecha que están confrontando a los movimientos feministas. Ah, oh, great. We have interpretation back. Fantastic. Um, we're also seeing the impacts of global crises like climate change, um, COVID-19, ongoing economic crises, where so often it's the feminist and grassroots organizations and movements who are filling the gaps left by governments. And they are doing all of this on a shoestring, um, according to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, Perdón, no only 1% of the money available for gender equality no is going directly to women's and girls organizations. Excuse so me, we I, don't, excuse me, we don't have Spanish interpretation, my dear. It's still not working, Tassila, they said that it would be working now. No, we are in Spanish and we, you, we are listening to you, Shannon. If we have to listen to you and we try to do in Span, Spanglish, like always, <laughs> but we need to understand you. <laughs> Our sincerest apology, they are working on it. I will continue to translate. Perdón, Tarsila, voy a seguir traduciendo. Gracias, Emilia. Um, I am thrilled to be joined by seven panelists to talk about some of their key priorities, the challenges that they have encountered in their work, and good practices and strategies to ensure the continuity of their work. Hoy tenemos a siete panelistas que nos van a hablar de las prioridades de, de su trabajo, de los obstáculos que han encontrado y de los pasos a seguir. Okay, so uh, let me introduce our panelists. Um, first, we have Karen Elleman Klug, who is a Danish politician and a member of the Folketing for the Venstre political party. I hope I pronounced that correctly. She is a former minister, having held the positions of Minister of Fisheries 
Equality and Nordic Cooperation, Minister of the Environment and Minister of the Interior and Social Affairs. Primero vamos a presentar a Karen Eleman, que es una política danesa. Um, sí. um, Mercy Shehu is a promoter of women and youth rights, and she possesses more than six years of experience working in this field. She currently works with the Observatory for Youth and Children, um, an NGO in Albania, which works with young Roma women, among many other things. Messi Shehu is an activist feminist. Activism of juventud. Amelia, I'm having a hard time hearing you now. I'm, I'm not wondering if others might be as well. Sorry, I, I think the, the same issue. Yeah, me okay. too. Okay. Um, Hear me better now? A little bit. The challenges of meeting in, in global forums. Um, Cecilia Chacon Castillo is currently Secretary of Human Rights and President of the Mixed Justice Commission of Ecuador. She has a long history as an activist for the human rights of children and women in Ecuador and across Latin America and the Caribbean. Her bio is impressive, but the one thing that really stood out to me is her work organizing open dialogues between social organizations and governments in order to impact policy. Um, and so I'm sure we'll hear a little bit more about that today. La ministra Cecilia Chacón es ministra de Derechos Humanos en Ecuador. Um, ha hecho mucho trabajo para abrir el diálogo entre movimientos sociales y gobierno. Okay, Lopa Banerjee is the director of the Civil Society Division at UN Women, and she leads UN Women's work on partnering with um, and supporting women's rights groups and civil society networks around the world. Uh, Lopa is also the executive coordinator of the Generation Equality Forum, and I can say emphatically that it's her vision and her drive that has brought us here together today. So thank you, Lopa. Lopa Banerjee es directora de eh, relación con sociedad civil en ONU Mujeres. Podemos decir con certeza que Lopa Banerjee ha sido un actor muy importante en determinar eh, el foro Generación Igualdad. Okay. Uh, Monica Alemán es a senior program officer on the build program of the Ford Foundation um, in New York City and she's working to advance the foundation's efforts to support and develop stronger, sustainable, and more effective social justice organizations around the world. Um, and I've been lucky to work with Monica for a long time, having first met her when she was at Madre um, a number of years ago. <laughs> Thank you, Monica. Um, and next, Mónica Alemán, sorry, uh, Mónica Alemán es directora senior de programa en la Fundación Ford y trabaja en el programa Build, eh, que está diseñando una nueva manera de dar fondos a organizaciones de sociedad civil. Tarsila Rivera Zea is a Quechua activist, a member of the United Nations Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues since her election in 2016. Uh, she also helped to create the permanent workshop of Andean and Amazonian Indigenous Women of Peru and the Center of Indigenous Cultures of Peru, Chirapac, where she was formerly president and is now vice president. She's also the coordinator of the Continental Liaison for Indigenous Women of the Americas, ACMIA. Um, and I've also been lucky to work with Tarsila for, for quite some time and have been inspired by her vision and leadership. Tarsila Rivera Sea es una activista, direct, eh, directora y cofundadora de Chirapac y también um, pres, eh, colaboradora del Fondo Internacional de Mujeres Indígenas. Okay. Kitoria um, Wirangane has the network of young women leaders in Mozambique. 
She's also resident analyst in the STV national TV program called Opinion on Gender Lens. Um, she was the first young woman to be a national electoral representative with the party Nova Democracia in Mozambique. Um, and she has an incredible list of accomplishments. We're thrilled to have her with us today. Kiteria Kirangane is an activist joven de Mozambique que ha trabajado um, representado la juventud en varios programas y agencias um, en Mozambique. Great. So, Lopa, I'm going to start with you. So, from your position working with feminist and women's rights movements around the world, you have a bit of a bird's eye view of um, the power of these organizations and movements. And so I wanted to ask you, what do you see that makes feminist movements powerful? And you know, what do we gain and what do we lose if they're not part of the mix? Thank you so much for that uh, question, Shannon. And first, let me greet all my fellow feministas on this panel and also welcome to the Generation Equality Forum. Thank you so much to the government of Mexico and the government of, of France for co-hosting it. Thank you so, so, so much to civil society and young feminists for your leadership and partnership in this, uh, in this enterprise and this idea that we are all embarking on. Do I stop for the translation? Yes, thank you, Lopa. Um, so, uh, perdón. Lopa Banerjee ha dicho que es Está muy contenta de estar aquí. Agradece al gobierno de México, agradece a Francia y sobre todo agradece a Sociedad Civil por estar aquí eh, para poder eh, seguir adelante en, en el foro Generación e Igualdad para llegar a la acción. Thank you so much to Mexico for kicking this off. And it is really exciting to be here on this panel. Actually, the plenary panel on women's leadership and this panel on feminist movements, which I think are at the heart of the Generation Equality Forum. Es un honor estar en este panel, sobre todo en este panel y en el panel de liderazgos feministas. Eh, es el corazón de the El Foro Generación Igualdad. Uh, Shannon, I'm going to respond to your question with three, three points. First, why are feminist movements important and what do we lose if we don't have strengthened, um, robust, supported feminist movements that can promote their activism safely across the world? I'm going to talk about the fact that this is critically linked to the issue of democracy. If we look at the ways in which democracies have developed across the world, anti-racism, anti-colonialism, uh, anti-apartheid, uh, uh, anti everywhere feminist movements, intersectional feminist movements were at the core of building democracies. Today, we are at, in, a, in, a, uh, uh, in a situation where the notion of democracy is evolving. Democracy is not a static idea. It is a constantly evolving idea. And it is not something that, that, that stays, but it is something that we endeavor at every single day. Lopa ha uh, mencionado que uh... Los movimientos feminista, feministas son críticos para la democracia. Los movimientos feministas han estado en el corazón de la construcción de las democracias y las democracias en sí no son una idea estática, sino cambia y es eh, alimentada por los movimientos feministas. I, I can't hear Amelia very well. So somebody just... Okay, now... Lopa, I think you might just turn your translation off if you want to hear me better. Sorry. Um, will somebody signal to me when Emilia is finished because I can't? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Shannon. Um, so uh, we are at a moment in time today. Todavía no tenemos simultáneo. Sorry. Uh, Tarsila nos están diciendo que ya funciona la traducción. Yeah, ya tenemos. Okay, so is it simultaneous now? 
Yes. Okay. okay, fantastic. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, so I will continue. So we are at a moment in time right now where we are seeing all over the world the growth of illiberal democracies. Not just that, the growth of elected autocracies. So in other words, the process and the, and the enterprise of democracy itself by trusting that people will vote, will vote to elect governments that are inclusive and plural, that idea is now challenged and flawed. Therefore, the role of feminist movements, women's movements and young, uh, young people's movements in all their intersectionality is absolutely crucial to hold fast to the idea that democracy serves all those who live in it. And from that perspective, women's movements feminist movements, intersectional movements, bring to the center the arguments, the discourse, the demands that would otherwise not be heard. The, to me, the second point that I want to raise is the issue, the enduring power of protest. And I don't just mean a protest, just uh, just, just, just mobilizing on the streets. I mean the manner in which feminist movements all over the world strategize thoroughly, effectively with lawyers, with communities, with, with, um, uh, with, with journalists, with art activists, with, uh, with different uh, aspects of social, um, of society and social influences to build the strategies to challenge undemocratic notions in courts, in the media, the thoroughness with which cases are built unevenly, but indisputably in courts to challenge um, 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 uh, indiscriminatory legislation, to challenge discrimi discriminatory practices, and most importantly, to challenge discriminatory policies. So the, the role of feminist movements in upholding a plural, equal, just democracy is absolutely central if we are going to have democratic uh, communities and societies. And finally, what do we lose? We lose a world that we have all built up to this point in time, which is a world that is uh, where we can all dream of equality and justice. The notion of justice and equality for all is compromised and deeply, deeply eroded if we do not have strengthened, resourced uh, feminist movements that have a voice at the table and that have an environment that is enabling for them to be able to operate. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you so much, Lopa, and strengthened resource to feminist movements. I think that's one of the things that are absolutely critical and one of the things that we're still lacking after all of these years. So I'm going to turn now to Mercy. Um, Mercy, you've been doing activism for gender equality in Albania for a number of years now. Um, and I wanted to ask you if you could share with us an example from your own work that demonstrates what makes feminist and women's rights movements and grassroots organizations successful. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you, Shannon. Uh, it is really an honor for me to be part of this panel, um, especially to be part of this strong, diverse women who share uh, the gender equality within their hearts. Uh, actually, I would firstly address something that is that it is particularly important to highlight, and I think it's it sets the path for everything that we discussed further. Uh, we we talk a lot about setting the standards of gender equality. However, uh, I indeed believe it is not just a standard; it's a minimum condition we should have to ensure the well-being of girls and women wherever they are in the world. 
And uh, I, I face it here in Albania. Women face several challenges and uh, you, you can see it. For example, currently uh, I am working on a case of providing uh, a young woman for marginalized communities access to education system uh, and employment opportunities. And you can see how weak the system is starting from the mentality of the people that are across and are near to the girl, her own mentality actually uh, that, that has influenced for so long her, but also you can see how the system is not yet ready to fully back up and support her uh, within her new journey. Uh, so they, they are real stories, they are real people, they are real cases and uh, whatever we do, what even if we help her, uh, still it, it's not enough. It's not enough because there are so many other girls who may need support from our side. So I think this is particularly important. Of course, uh, we start from somewhere. It's an achievement, but yet I think uh, we have so, so far uh, to go further. So I think there are cases of successful even here in Albania, but yet I think our journey, our journey remains far away from uh, where we should be. And uh, another thing that I would really shortly like to point is the fact that um, I am here today because many women set the path for me. And I think uh, it is similar. What we have achieved today, it is because we want to every girl, every woman who, nave, who never gave up, never gave up to, to and allowed and create the space for us to be here today. So I think uh, whatever we discuss, we keep in mind that we own to them who set the path for us to be here today to continue uh, strongly together. Thank you so much, Marcin. I think you highlighted um, two things for me. One is the importance of systemic change. And I think that's one of the powerful um, things that feminists have really worked for is recognizing that it, the personal is political, but we also need to change the systems that we're operating within in order to have that change. Um, but also uh, the importance of mentorship and building that next generation of feminist leadership. And we are so excited to have you as part of our movement and, and to be continuing this work. Um, I'm now going to turn to Tassila. Um, Tassila, the same question for you. From your own experiences in Peru, working at the intersections of women's rights and indigenous people's rights, could you give us an example of how the movements you are part of have been able to drive change um, and what made them so powerful? In primer lugar, in los últimos 30 años, eh, tenemos que reconocer que el esfuerzo intergeneracional y de generaciones son importantes porque eh, hemos aprendido, hemos fortalecido nuestras capacidades de diálogo también con el movimiento amplio y entonces podemos decir ahora que estamos en una etapa de construir y de fortalecer alianzas para construir y luchar por una agenda común como, como los objetivos de lograr la igualdad de género. Eso me parece importantísimo, teniendo en cuenta algo que Lopa comentó, ¿no? Venimos de sociedades colonizadas y racistas. Y esas, esas prácticas colonizantes y racistas han retrasado justamente el diálogo entre las diferencias, incluyendo el movimiento de mujeres o el movimiento feminista. Porque todos nosotras trabajamos por convicciones que tienen que ver a acceder al respeto y a vida plena. Entonces, si se reproducen las formas coloniales de sentirse mejor o, que otros, pues es una barrera tremenda que retrasa los procesos de alianza y de construcción de agenda común. En ese sentido, de lo local a lo global, podemos decir que hemos encontrado movimientos sociales y de mujeres 
más abiertas, más respetuosas y también abiertas al diálogo, ¿no? Porque ahora se hablan de los feminismos con ese y las indígenas estamos acuñando violencias con ese para que justamente cuando hablemos del de impacto del cambio climático podamos también mirar cómo la interseccionalidad se ve mucho más afectada en el caso de mujeres, indígenas, niñas o afrodescendientes, o los sectores que todavía no están como protagonistas en propia voz y en propia persona. Entonces, yo creo que es una gran oportunidad todo lo que nos pasa, incluyendo la pandemia, porque nos permite mirarnos hacia adentro para mirar el colectivo y mirar el futuro. Y ahí es donde nos encontramos todas las diferencias tratando de aportar, de construir, pero también de hacernos escuchar y aprender a escuchar a otros. Yo creo que el movimiento feminista va por buen camino porque nadie quiere un movimiento feminista solo de intelectuales, solo de académicas o solo de, de, de mujeres, digamos, de clase alta. Justamente el feminismo eh, que se articula en las diversidades dialogando y encontrando propuestas comunes va a caminar hacia el logro de la igualdad de género entre los géneros también, ¿no? Ese sería mi aporte. Yo siempre estoy bien esperanzada en todo lo que podemos hacer las mayores, las actuales y también mucha fuerza para la juventud con una mirada diferente en esto, que somos diversidades pero mirando hacia el mismo lado. Y ahí nos necesitamos todas. Las que ponen los boletos, las que abren el escenario y las que soñamos con mundos diferentes. Gracias. Gracias, Tassila. Y, you know, the point that you make about it not just being a feminist approach, but intersectional feminist approach and really interrogating um, our differences, being open to conversation and dialogue and bringing um, our, everybody along with us, I, I think is, is really critical. Um, so you're right, um, that's the, the future that we're trying to construct, one that is really representative of the diversity of, of our movements. Um, So now turning to Kitaria, um, you have experience both within government um, and grassroots organizations. And I was wondering if you could share from your perspective um, an example or your views of how feminist and grassroots organizations and movements you've worked with have driven change um, and what have been some of the things that have made them impactful. Okay, thank you. Oh, thank you for this invitation. Uh, as the president of, young, uh, of the Mozambican Young Women Leaders Network, I can say, uh, first let me share that more, uh, now women in Mozambique are facing a triple war. We have terrorism in the north of the country, we have military conflict in the center of the country, and we have, as you all, the COVID-19 pandemic at the national level, while we're still recovering from Idai, Kennedy, and the Loy Cyclones. In this specific moment, I'm talking to you, women are hidden in the bushes, listening to the sound of guns and perhaps being raped due to terrorism in a land that promised them richness coming from the gas revenue. Some of these women are members of the Young Women Leaders Network. So we have been engaged at all levels to assure that women can be recognized as part of society because there is no social justice or no sustainable development without women inclusion. And let me tell you that uh, for us representation, we need to assure representation, resource, equal resource allocation and uh, the consideration of different realities of young women and women uh, in, in Mozambique at, at, at international level. Uh, women are still treated as a mere statistic to comply with international community equality standards. And let me tell you a story, a recent story of a well-known civil society women activist who was recently appointed to integrate the National Commission of Election. 
During an internal, me internal meeting to designate spokesperson, the political party in power recommended the vote for continuity on a man who is there for more than 10 years. The other members from civil society and, and not only suggested that at least this activist would be a better choice uh, uh, as, as the national spokesperson of the National Commission of Election. And Alice was elected last week uh, with the majority of votes. And on the 3rd of this month, she was called by the ruling party to resign. She, they made her to write a letter and she delivered the letter last week saying that she doesn't have capabilities to rule, to be the national spokesperson. So this shows that we still have really challenge to the protection of human women rights defenders. And uh, many of them are still being erased. Some of them even intimidated, including of releasing their intimate videos if they do not behave as they usually say. So there are a lot of challenges. We have uh, conflict, terrorism challenge, we have political challenge, we have uh, humanitarian challenge. So as the Young Women Leaders Network, we have been securing humanitarian assistance to displaced people with a gender perspective, as well as assistance to gender-based violence. We have also been hosting high-level dialogues on women, peace, and security, engaging government, parliament, defense forces, UN, academy, private sector, religious groups, and cooperation partners, so that we can discuss how Resolution 1325 can be turned into reality to respond to the challenge of these women facing terrorism and not only. Uh, we have been holding, and I invite you all to, to visit, I, 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 although it's in Portuguese, we have been holding the first digital exhibition that is Mozambique Under Gender Lens. That is an exhibition that you can find in mh.me slash 2020 genero. That is a, an exhibition to raise attention to the different realities and challenges that women face in 2020. So it's a way of innovating in responding to the challenges of women. And we are also setting up a national database of young women leaders, both at feminist organization, at the grassroots movements, uh, and informal groups, so that we can join together efforts and solidarity amongst young women leaders linking training and supporting young women leaders so that we can respond and we can resist to all forms of violence against women. And uh, as, as you said before, I am I'm the youngest women leader in Mozambique that is a commentator to a, a national TV show that talks about political analysis. So this is a way that we also raise our voices and make sure that all those issues that young women are facing, but also old women are facing all across the country can be can have a voice to be raised and we can resist to all forms of violence representing all these women and giving them a voice and a space to, 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 to visibility. And at last, uh, uh, we have been advocating for equal, equal equality in representation, resource allocation, and also accountability, including through a robust media campaign on peace and security. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for reminding us of the context that you're working in um, and the very real attacks that we're facing on women human rights defenders. We just finished the Commission on the Status of Women last week, and um, that was one of the most challenging conversations um, around the agreed conclusions. And we didn't make the progress that we wanted to see, so we still have a huge amount of work to do there. Um, but one, one point in particular that you made about supporting young feminists to leave, um, it, I think is really critical because the most effective movements that we see are the ones that are generative, that really focus on on building that leadership and, and uniting um, young feminists around a common vision as well. Um, I'm going to turn now to Minister Chacon. Um, Cecilia, from your experience working with diverse movements um, and now the government in, in Ecuador, what are some of the challenges that you see for women's movements in complex settings? Gracias, buenos días a todas y a todos. Bueno, la gran mayoría ha hablado que desde hace 30 años el movimiento de mujeres ha tenido un rol protagónico 
en el mundo y sobre todo en América Latina. Yo quiero recordar que hace 30 años en mi ciudad natal no había una no, sola no, no, universidad. Y al no haber una sola universidad, las mujeres, las jóvenes en ese entonces teníamos que emigrar a la capital con la finalidad de poder eh, tener una oportunidad no solo para estudiar, sino de volver a nuestras ciudades para garantizar que los jóvenes podamos también apoyar a nuestras ciudades. ¿Qué tiene que ver esto con el movimiento de mujeres? Pues muchísimo, porque es el movimiento de mujeres el que ha ido garantizando que el acceso y el esfuerzo hacia los derechos de salud, de educación, derechos sexuales y reproductivos estén dentro de la política pública. Hoy, como mujer, como militante del movimiento de mujeres, como una ex viceprefecta de, de mi provincia, hoy como ministra, constato que ha habido un cambio importantísimo. Hoy en mi ciudad natal ya hay universidades, pero eso no significa que han desaparecido los desafíos importantes. Uno de ellos, promover que el movimiento de mujeres deje de ser esta visión elitista de las capitales de, las, de los países o una visión elitista de las capitales de provincias o departamentos. El movimiento de mujeres tiene un gran desafío para multiplicarse en todos los territorios y de igual manera acoger, acogernos a todas, las jóvenes, las grandes, nuestras madres, nuestras ancestras, que nos han abierto el camino fundamental para que hoy, por ejemplo, estemos aquí pudiendo promover este espacio de diálogo y acompañamiento. En mi país, el movimiento de mujeres es un movimiento que amerita esta consolidación, un diálogo permanente, un fortalecimiento también del movimiento de mujeres y que hoy más que nunca le presenta una agenda política desde las mujeres a los que hoy en este momento quieren ser presidentes de mi país. Estamos viviendo un momento de transición y por lo tanto esta agenda que no vemos, no sentimos que se haya apropiado, que esté internamente y sea de convicción de los candidatos, realmente repercuta en la política pública futura. Por lo tanto, es necesario que el movimiento de mujeres articule este esfuerzo para no quedarnos en el camino de la lucha, de la pelea, sino también del encuentro y del encuentro con los hitos, con los hitos, con los logros, con las concreciones. Y entonces, esta agenda tiene que ver ahora con la multiplicidad, con la diversidad de los esfuerzos que podamos ahora hacerlo desde el movimiento de mujeres, que es hoy más que nunca una esperanza que fortalece sobre todo la convicción desde las más jóvenes a las más adultas. Gracias. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, you make a really important point about the fact that the work of, of women's movements is, is long and it is diverse. Um, and we, I, I'm not sure that our work will ever be done, but celebrating those milestones and looking for those opportunities along the way to influence change and to influence policy, I, I think is really important. Um, so now I'm going to turn to Karen. Um, Karen, could you, from your perspective and, and your experience as a politician, um, but also as an activist, um, what should we be taking on board as we both work within movements um, and with governments to uh, support our, our work um, as a, a feminist movement? Um, what, what are some of the key lessons that, that you have learned? Well, thank you very much for giving me the floor and It's really a joy to, to listen to all of you with very important statements. And uh, I'm sitting here in the cold Denmark, northern part of Europe right now. And 
as many of you might know, when we do all these benchmarks, we always uh, say, oh, we do so well on, on gender equality in, in the Nordic countries. And yes, that's right. But I really appreciate that you also mentioned that this comes with um, focus and with a lot of work. And we are standing on the shoulders of proud women and men in generations before us. And that will be one of my points here this afternoon is that it's very important that we also remember to actually include men and boys in these discussions. Because when we insist on actually bringing girls and women's right to the table, we have this dialogue with the men and with the boys to actually make space so we are all around the table because equality is for everyone, no matter gender, no matter sexual orientation, no matter gender identity. So that would be one of my important points. Don't forget the men and the boys in these very important discussions because a lot of them, not all, but a lot of them very much do agree with us. And then I think what is also very important for all of us is that we have to continue challenging the social norms and the gender stereotypes. They are still there and we all need to, to look into the way we raise our children, the way we talk to our daughters about what kind of education, what kind of job, what kind of life do you want to, to make for yourself? So that will also be uh, one of my points that we have to continue um, challenging our, our social norms. And then it's extremely important that we keep on uh, creating networks and forums to have this ongoing open dialogue. And uh, my colleague from Albania, you made, I think, a, a very important point that, that you keep on showcasing the progress made. You also do that in Mozambique, you just told us. I think it's very important that we make these kind of reports, the, these kind of benchmarks, so we keep on uh, challenging the, the progress. Because as uh, Lopez said in the beginning, our democracies are indeed challenged. And Lots of nations do not even have democracy. So there is there's so much work to be done, but I think these milestones, these accomplishments, they shall be and they need to be celebrated and explained. How did we actually get there? How do we keep on having the dialogue? How do we keep on insisting on um, unequal opportunities? I think I will try to make this one short because then I, might be able to save some of the minutes for 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 second round so so thank you very much thank you and i'm going to turn now to monica monica is, your program at the ford foundation specifically focused on building the capacities resiliencies of organizations and movements so i wonder if you could share from your perspective, what are some of the key challenges um, that the organizations and movements that you work with face? Um, and what is it that really makes them successful? Inicio por, por darte las gracias, Shannon, por invitarme a ser parte de esta conversación. Inicio también por darle las gracias al gobierno de México y al gobierno de Francia y por reconocer el trabajo incansable de LOPA para lograr que este foro se hiciera realidad. Así que primero con eso. Segundo, contarles que yo trabajo para la Fundación Ford. La Fundación Ford es una de las filantropías más grandes en el mundo y, y por En los últimos 30 años hemos sido conscientes que para poder nosotros lograr nuestros objetivos de avanzar la justicia social, tenemos que tener 
una relación estratégica con los movimientos de mujeres y en particular con el movimiento feminista. Y esto lo hemos hecho de forma muy concreta. Lo hemos hecho facilitando recursos financieros para organizaciones de mujeres. Solo en este año 2020, nuestra asignación de recursos dirigida a organizaciones de mujeres alrededor del mundo va a ser de más de 100 millones de dólares. Y hemos tomado, además de eso, una decisión estratégica. Y la decisión estratégica que hemos tomado es de que no solo vamos a dar recursos, pero sino que lo vamos a dar desde una perspectiva donde reconocemos que la prioridad debe ser en el sur global. En tu pregunta me haces, eh, me haces reflexionar un poco, ¿verdad? De por qué no hemos avanzado al ritmo que hemos querido avanzar. Y yo te diría tres cosas. La primera razón del por qué no hemos avanzado es porque no hemos financiado al movimiento feminista en la manera que necesita el movimiento feminista para resolver la escala de los problemas que están tratando. La segunda razón por la que no se ha hecho tanto avance es porque no hemos logrado institucionalizar ciertos mecanismos ¿verdad? que estén orientados a tener políticas de financiamiento feminista. ¿verdad? Sí han habido eh, financiamiento, pero no financiamiento feminista. Y por lo tanto, cuando los recursos fluyen, no fluyen con una serie de valores que permiten que estos recursos sean orientados a las causas que deben ser orientados. Y la tercera razón es que creo que el movimiento feminista ¿verdad? también ha sido parte del de problema en cuanto a plantearse las soluciones, porque hemos dejado de lado a ciertos sectores de la sociedad a la hora que presentamos nuestra demanda, ¿verdad? y hemos dejado a sectores y a grupos de poblaciones que han sido históricamente excluidos, grupos tales como las personas con discapacidad, como a las mujeres negras, como a las mujeres indígenas, donde no han sido parte central de la agenda del movimiento feminista. Así que yo creo que esas son tres grandes áreas que realmente nos tocaría a nosotros trabajar para poder realmente empezar a empujar un proceso de transformación. Y tu segunda parte de tu pregunta es, ¿qué estamos haciendo nosotros en una institución como la Fundación Ford? Y te diría yo que estamos haciendo dos cosas. Lo primero es entendiendo la realidad de una forma más concreta. Creo que es muy bonito para instituciones como la Ford sentarse en sus edificios bonitos en diferentes partes del mundo y creer que tenemos la solución a los problemas. Y la realidad es que no tenemos la solución a los problemas. La solución de los problemas está en las organizaciones de mujeres. Y hemos tomado una decisión estratégica y política como institución de poder poner nuestro oído y nuestro corazón y nuestra mente al servicio de empezar a entender la realidad para que nuestros programas sean más, um, más uh, o sea, respondan mucho mejor a, a, a ir resolviendo los problemas que se están dando. Y lo segundo que estamos haciendo eh, estamos cambiando los mecanismos en las formas en las que estamos dando los recursos, ¿verdad? Estamos tratando de financiar de forma más directa a las organizaciones de mujeres en el sur global, entendiendo, ¿verdad?, de que esta idea de, de la falta de capacidad es una idea que nace del complejo de superioridad y de la supremacía blanca y que nace 
del colonialismo, ¿verdad? Entonces nosotros estamos rompiendo esta brecha y diciéndonos a nosotros mismos que estamos haciendo un compromiso de financiar directamente a las organizaciones, sea donde, estén donde estén. Creo que esos son algunos de los puntos que me gustaría tomar hasta ahora, Shannon. Gracias. Thank you so much, Monica. Um, and I, I think you've touched on some really important points for us to be taking forward uh, the importance of trusting and listening to women's organizations and responding to what they need, giving them funding directly um, rather than going through intermediaries and, and trying to give them support that is um, not responding to foundation priorities, but their own. Um, that kind of unrestricted funding is, is really important to sustaining this work. So I'm conscious of time and I know that we want to have some time for robust discussion with those participating in this session. Um, so I have one quick question for each of you. Um, what is one or two specific actions that governments, the private sector, um, international funds or others should prioritize to support the work of feminist groups and organizations. Um, and Monica, you have already answered, um, but is there anything additional um, that you wanted to add? Bueno, yo creo en realidad que lo principal que podemos hacer instituciones como la Fundación Ford y otras instituciones, incluyendo a las bilaterales y a las multilaterales, es centrar nuestra perspectiva de las soluciones en las mujeres que han sido históricamente excluidas y marginalizadas. Centrar los recursos y la atención en el, las múltiples expresiones del movimiento feminista y de forma particular la, atendiendo la situación de las mujeres indígenas, de las mujeres negras y de las mujeres con discapacidad. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Um, Lopa, I'm going to turn it to you. I know you need to leave early. Thank you so much, Shannon. In fact, I'll pick up from where uh, Monica left off. And I also want to refer, if you will allow me, Shannon, to, uh, to um, actually reference something that Karen said about male, uh, male advocate for gender equality. So to the point about what should we be doing as institutions as, uh, so the, from, a, from a perspective of where I sit, the United Nations as a multilateral system, I think what we have done with the Generation Equality Forum, which is center the importance of movements, these intersectional movements, intergenerational multi-stakeholder movement that is at the core of generation equality. So centering movements, the, uh, the focus on building coalitions that again has happened uh, through the forum. And in fact, the forum has highlighted where coalitions exist and the importance of coalition and then strength, voice and influence. We have seen how the forum has transformed the discussions on critical issues from economic empowerment to economic justice, dealing with issues of climate justice, talking about bodily autonomy, talking about intersectionality, the importance of collective bargaining, looking at LGBTI rights, looking at race, this kind of intersectional discussion uh, that is necessary uh, at this point in time if in order for governments to operate with more transparency and accountability so for the for the for the un for the multilateral system to really pay attention to movements and to to recognizing that movements and strengthening movements is the is the next uh, step it, it is the neck is the contemporary multilateral agenda should be looking at how movements strengthen the, 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 the discourse and the standards around human rights, justice, peace, 
and equality. And in that context, I also want to um, reference what Ellen said about, um, uh, about the role of men and boys. And I think that is absolutely crucial, but I think that what is even more important in our work with men and boys is, is really asking for men to seed space. Male allyship. This, you know, we keep talking about men as men as gender equality advocates. Yes, but given that seventy percent of leadership and positions of influence in the world are occupied by men, for men to be allies, uh, feminist allies and allies in the gender equality movement, the first and most important action of accountability has to be for them to seed space. So male leaders to create the conditions where they are seeding space for, um, uh, for, 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 for women, for young people, uh, for, 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 for people in all their diversity to be represented at the table so that uh, governments can respond with policies that, 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 that respond to everybody in their communities. Thank you. Thank you, Lopa. Karen, I am going to now turn to you. Um, what do you think one or two key things that, that governments in your case should be doing to um, support women's movements? Well, I think you need to, to grab uh, more basically because um, having uh, feminist movements in, in every single country, you need to invite them to the table. You need to make in parliament and in government, you need to make these kind of, I would call them natural meeting points where you actually have, that's why I mentioned uh, benchmarking uh, in my previous uh, uh, points, because when you have these maybe yearly or every second year upcoming benchmarks that are actually maybe even adopted in parliament, then, then you are forced to have this dialogue and you're forced to face the facts. So that will be uh, one point. And then, I mean, it's still very basic and I need to say it also in, in this panel. I mean, we must make sure that young people have access to comprehensive sexuality education. This is the only way that you are able as a human being to actually make your informed choices about your life, about your body, about your sexuality. And, and that's the very basic to actually uh, move on forward in a more uh, equal world with equal opportunities. And then, and then I think uh, also keep on discussing this very important issue about uh, uh, um, um, uh, what, what, uh, uh, com, uh, contraception, sorry, I forgot the name, contraception and uh, making sure that you have access to uh, safe and legal abortion. This is also the whole basic matter of making this a health discussion, making this a, a human rights discussion. The, the, the will and the need to, to decide over your own body, to be in charge of your own life, uh, to, to decide when, with whom, and how many uh, children you want. So, of course, this is basic core and something you always discussed in, discuss in the, the feminist movement, but this should be broadened out. And that's why you have to have this access to, to government and, and parliament. And one last point. In, in our parliament, we have made these uh, all party networks. I'm chairman of our all party SRHR network. We have basically all political parties joining this all party uh, working group. We are more than 60 members. And by the way, 25 of them are male members. So making sure that you make these kind of of uh, well, well organized um, forums also within parliament and of course uh, in government as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Minister Chacon, um, 
the same question for you. Uh, one or two things that absolutely need to be done in order to support women's movements. Thank you. Um, hace años atrás, eh, mi maestro de derechos humanos empezaba a explicar la historia de los derechos humanos del hombre y lo repetía permanentemente y algún momento le decía, eh, teacher, please, eh, hablemos de los derechos de hombres y mujeres. Y me decía, ok, muy bien, muy bien. Y volvió nuevamente y decía, vamos a pensar en la historia de los derechos del hombre. Me miró y me dijo, oh sí, oh sí, de las mujeres también. ¿No? Y pensaba que nos está dando como un regalo, como un favor, hablar de los derechos de las mujeres. Eso es lo que no puede pasar ahora ni en la política pública, ni en un Estado que cree que si se llama moderno, un Estado moderno, puede dejar de hablar de los derechos humanos de las mujeres y de sus generaciones. Eso en la actualidad no se podría pensar. Por ello, es necesario sobre todo que los mecanismos de igualdad de género tengan un rol importantísimo para la formulación de la política pública. Estoy de acuerdo con lo que ha dicho Mónica y Yopa en que es necesario mirarnos en un espejo de cuerpo entero para mirarnos todas en todos nuestros niveles, en todas nuestras formas, demandas y necesidades y que esta agenda refleje estos orientadores de igualdad para cerrar estas brechas de diferencia que existen en el Estado, en la política pública y entre nosotras también las mujeres. Y esto implica ir cada vez más pensando en presupuestos más coherentes, con equipos técnicos también cada vez más sensibles y sensibilizados a la perspectiva de la realidad de las mujeres y entrar en un proceso que lo hemos hecho como ahora el foro de generación igualdad en la cooperación permanente y hoy por ejemplo mi país por fin de un poquito de años de lucha de ir pensando y arriesgando somos parte del fondo spotlight que permite orientar acciones conjuntas entre el estado y este ha sido un proceso de diálogo abierto, sincero y transparente con la sociedad civil a fin de poder promover prevención y erradicación del femicidio, que es uno de los males modernos y agravados, crueles, en las que las mujeres estamos y que la política pública tiene que mirar en su integralidad, porque el negar, el negar o invisibilizar o velar el problema de las mujeres simplemente va a ser no atacar los problemas verdaderos de la sociedad, los problemas de las mujeres son los problemas de la sociedad y los problemas de la sociedad tienen que ir acompañados de política pública. Por eso también hemos impulsado con nuestro aporte al acuerdo de ministras en la conferencia regional sobre la condición de la mujer en CEPAL, donde promovemos que los estados deben seguir apostando en una buena práctica conjunta y que esta va a ser la única manera de responder y avanzar a los logros en la promoción y progresividad de los derechos de las mujeres. Juntas en esta generación igualdad queremos abogar, seguir construyendo de nuevo mejor esta nueva normalidad que aspiramos que realmente sea diferente, disruptiva desde la construcción de las mujeres, desde la inclusión y la integración de la gran diversidad a la cual nos pertenecemos y que en este foro hemos probado que somos distintas, diversas, generacionalmente eh, incluyentes y que este debería ser el, re el reflejo más profundo que el foro en México llegue a Francia con esta vocación de mirarnos en el espejo de cuerpo entero. Muchas gracias. Thank you so much. Um, 
Tarsila, I'm going to turn to you now. Um, and I was wondering if you could say from your perspective, what are the one or two things that um, governments, private sector and others should be doing to support the work of feminist groups and organizations? Necesitamos mucha alianza sólida porque se necesita apoyo político, ¿no es cierto? Por ejemplo, nos gustaría que los estados pudieran incluir en los mecanismos de la mujer a nivel nacional una dirección específica con programas y presupuesto propio para mujeres indígenas y afrodescendientes. ¿Por qué? Porque en países donde, por ejemplo, en nuestra región somos casi 55 millones las mujeres indígenas. Entonces, si tuviéramos esos programas específicos, se podría dar atención a todo lo que está pendiente, porque nuestros estados se comprometen a la Agenda 2030, pero cuando bajamos a las políticas nacionales, las mujeres, o sea, la educación que es tan importante, la salud y el Ministerio de la Mujer y todo lo que tiene que ver con la producción de alimentos que es el Ministerio de Agricultura, son los que tienen menos presupuesto y menos atención. Entonces aquí tenemos a la ministra de Derechos Humanos del Ecuador y no sé si en todas partes... Por ejemplo, una mujer elegida ministra, o sea, en un cargo de poder, tiene una mirada de igualdad de género o no. Porque cuando se participa en la distribución de los recursos, generalmente perdemos las mujeres, pierden las niñas. ¿no? Eh, eso es un aspecto que nos interesaría tener clarísimo compromiso de hacer visible en los programas nacionales el cumplir con los compromisos de lograr la igualdad de género. Desde los mecanismos internacionales es necesario igual esta construcción de alianza cuando hablamos de, de violencias, violencia sexual, violencia, cómo es que las niñas indígenas o las niñas discapacitadas son las que están en peor situación frente a la justicia y frente al derecho de ser respetadas. Entonces, hay necesidad de incluir, por ejemplo, que ahora como estamos hablando de incluir una recomendación general para mujeres indígenas, niñas indígenas en el mecanismo de la CEDAO. ¿Por qué? Porque hay aspectos específicos que se necesitan tener en cuenta cuando miramos las interseccionalidades, las oportunidades económicas, casi hemos pasado como 20 años tratando de hacer entender que sí tenemos capacidad de administrar y manejar fondos. Y por eso pedimos mucha inversión en formación, porque nosotras mismas quisiéramos hacerlo, ¿no? aprender a hacerlo. Y la tercera parte es cómo en esta diversidad se respetan y se escuchan las diversas agendas, las prioridades que cada, cada cual tiene. ¿no? Eh, muchas veces se vienen las agendas de arriba hacia abajo. Tenemos que construir agendas que se complementan, que se apoyan mutuamente y entender las prioridades justamente mirando las interseccionalidades, porque hay mujeres y niñas y niños que se están quedando atrás. Entonces, tenemos que mirarnos horizontalmente en esa diversidad. El aspecto educativo es muy importante y de formación. Lo que queremos hoy lograr es que también no seamos solo hablando entre nosotras. Tenemos que hacer que los que deciden la política en nuestros países y en el mundo vaya abriendo los oídos y la mente para, hacer, para ejercer el poder y hacer política de una manera más 
constituyente. En el caso, por ejemplo, en las comunidades indígenas, cuando uno habla del embarazo adolescente o de niñas que son entregadas muchas veces, adolescentes a personas mayores, los padres están escuchando en su lengua propia cuando vamos a las comunidades y ellas, ellos dicen, yo también soy padre de esa niña y por lo tanto necesito aprender que aunque en la práctica las niñas se embarazan a los 13 años, yo ahora quiero que mi hija aprenda otras cosas y sea profesional como las demás. Entonces, no es eh, equivocado decir que hay necesidad de incluir a los liderazgos varones, pero tenemos que tener mucha atención en el sistema educativo público, porque es ahí donde las niñas y los niños van formándose eh, para hacer que si vamos a seguir pensando que solo algunos y no incluimos en el sistema educativo el respeto que se debe tener, desarrollar entre niñas y niños y mejorar las calidades también de formación para todos, pues siempre estaremos repitiendo lo mismo. Ese sería más o menos mi, mis aportes. Eh, ya no podemos seguir trabajando aisladamente ni tampoco solo entre nosotras y solo los, los indígenas, ¿cuánto decimos nosotras? ¿Cómo transitamos las indígenas a entender también la dimensión intercultural en las relaciones políticas y en las relaciones económicas? Gracias. Thank you, Tarsila. Really, really important points about the need for change at multiple levels. Um, and the importance of, again, centering intersectionality in our work um, and bringing people into those conversations. Really appreciate that. Um, Kiturria, uh, from your perspective, one or two things that are needed to support feminist movements and women's rights organizations. Uh, for me, the answer is related to a three R approach. In representation, there is a need to support a meaningful parity law. We need to be more than part of the statistic to legitimate democratic bodies. A commitment with a zebra electoral system that lays on equal opportunities instead on men approval is desirable. When at the global level, only 30% of scientists and researchers are women, we need to guarantee that women can have a vibrant voice in all decision making, even related to the, to the COVID-19. Uh, in resources, we need a fair and just resource allocation system, and we need to hold governments and grant capital accountable. There is a need to comply with agenda disaggregation indicators when allocating resources, planning public service, and delivering results through the reports. In realities, we, need, we first need to acknowledge that there is no participation without peace, no results without safety and no sustainable development without inclusion. And if we want to make the world a better place, we need to acknowledge the, how these realities impact differently in women and men and in women and women, in young women and old women. And if we can recognize this difference and barriers, let's value local knowledge instead of planning top down. For instance, the moment we most need the National Peace Action Plan for Resolution 1325, it's locked under government desk only for donors to see. One size fits all response is a gender blind approach. So please for donors and government stop bringing us prayer grids and fair project results, theories of change and activities which do not represent our context. And for us in the last six months, a platform called Mulher Con Vida that is women with life that join together 16, uh, 65 uh, women feminist movements and women grassroots organization from all generation, which I'm part of, have been trying to answer the very same question. And one of the things that our theories of uh, theory of change believes that although there is no magic answer, we believe that if we map and amplify the voice and movements of women, 
in the expertise from district level to capital cities, if we listen to each other and guarantee the security and protection of women right defenders, and we, if we strengthen the capacities, knowledge, abilities of women organization to produce and share data and evidence, if we open a sincere discussion on the meaning of sorority and solidarity without judgment, without policing each other uh, or promoting stereotypes, but acknowledge that we are different. And so we can have a unique receipt or a roadmap on how women movement should act or behave. Then perhaps we can institutionalize a women observatory engaging women from grassroots to the to central level to hold governments, national parliament, judicial system, private sector and corporation partners accountable presenting a report on the situation of women with disaggregated data. I think even Generation Equality Forum would, should have this sense of uh, accountability in which governments, the, the, all the parties can come together and say, what have we did if after the last Generation Equality Forum? And how are we progressing to all the commitment we have assumed? So we believe with these or observatory of women or with generation equality being uh, accountable, putting governments accountable for their commitment, engaging women from grassroots to central level with updated data, evidence and reports on women, engaging all and accepting all the diversity of autonomous women voice in partnership with men organization for change then women can push for their own representativity at all level, amplifying our voice to hold governments accountable. And as a result, we can influence, we can have a voice and we can assure that our, all our experience and efforts can take us anywhere. So I think that um, if the streets are not safe nowadays, we need also to innovate and demonstrating online and joining our efforts for the women in Myanmar, for the women in Cabo Delgado, for women refugees around the world, and for the safe of all, of all women right defenders who are suffering from injustice right now. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mercy, your perspectives, one or two things that should be done to support feminist and, and women's rights organizations. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, actually, I'd firstly start uh, with partnership. Uh, it's easy to say partnership, but but what means? Yeah, and, and I think it involves two important key elements, which is trust and transparency. Uh, this is very important to be highlighted because we are on the same path and we need to work together to ensure gender equality. Um, it is not easy. It is quite easy to say, but it's quite difficult and we need to be with each other uh, and we are part of the same puzzle. We complete each other and we need to, to pass alongside each other in order to achieve our goals. So I think this is particularly important. Uh, also, um, it, it was highlighted previously, but I think we need to focus furthermore on the education. It is particularly important, especially sexual reproductive health rights education. Uh, we have seen uh, that many students and children are suffering of, due to the COVID pandemic from education, and we are one further step far away from achieving a, a fair education system for all. And I think it is also important to talk more and to involve all the other left behind groups. For example, we have marginalized groups, different communities, different levels, different hard to reach groups, different rural areas, persons. So I think we really need to focus on engaging all in the same table as equal partners. This is particularly important. Great. We do have just um, four and a half minutes left, but I do want to bring in some voices from the floor. And so I'm going to direct some questions at specific people here, and I'm going to ask you to answer in 30 seconds or less. Um, Ma Monica, um, this is for you. Governments and international foundations and, and other international partners are often criticized for supporting elitist feminist approaches that primarily empower women from socio certain socioeconomic backgrounds um, to the expense of other 
women from um, less educated or wealthy groups or who are otherwise historically marginalized. How can feminist movements um, promote transformative change on this in particular? What are some of the key things? Yo creo que la transformación debe ocurrir a los do, en, en dos niveles. En el, en el primer nivel es eh, desde la filantropía, desde los gobiernos y desde las fundaciones, entendiendo mejor quiénes son los actores que están dando las soluciones a, da, a diario y saliéndose un poco de su radar de confort para establecer nuevas relaciones con organizaciones que estén en los niveles locales o en los niveles nacionales. Por otro lado, creo que las organizaciones feministas también tienen una gran tarea de ser, un, de ser más incluyentes en sus realidades para salirse también de sus áreas de confort de quienes componen esas organizaciones feministas. Así que creo que la solución viene tanto del movimiento feminista como de, del mejor entendimiento de la comunidad de donantes. I'm sorry, Monica, the English interpretation doesn't seem to be working. Um, could you just say in, in English, uh, you know, one or two of those points? I'm sorry about that. N not a problem. I think that this is a two a two way solution. On the one hand, we need foundations and bilateral institutions deepening their understanding about who the real actors are that are driving change at the local level and moving beyond their, their uh, zones of comfort so that they establish partnership with organizations with whom they don't usually establish partnership. And secondly, I think that the feminist movement has a responsibility to be more inclusive and expand the notion of who belongs to the multiple expressions of the feminist movement with a deep understanding that for a long time, it has mostly been left to be in the hands of white women. And that has to change if we want solutions to be different. Thank you. Thank you so much, Monica. And that does bring me to another question that was asked. Um, how can feminist movements um, promote inclusion? What do we need to do to agree on an agenda that's based on inclusion without discrimination and that is really centering um, indigenous women, Afro-descendant women, women with disabilities, sex workers, and, and others. Um, Tassila, do you want to take that one on? Mm. Um, me gustaría que pudiéramos entender que no hay una sola forma de luchar contra la desigualdad y que hay esas múltiples diversidades luchando para el cambio y la justicia sin autodefinición. Porque cuando se habla de feminismo, por ejemplo, en sectores indígenas, el concepto de feminismo está prejuiciado y hay que desprejuiciar el feminismo. Y hay que decodificar también nuestra acción en relación a la diferencia y el poder, porque lamentablemente se nos ve quiénes son las feministas. Son las señoras blancas, académicas, de poder, relacionadas con el poder, intelectuales. Y cuando nosotras, como indígenas o diversidades de base, eh, empezamos a luchar por nuestros derechos, y alguien nos tipifica feminista, pues ya estamos prejuiciadas. Uno. Dos, que hablando de las oportunidades en fondos, muchas veces se dice, estos fondos son solo para el movimiento feminista o líderes feministas. Y entonces es una barrera porque si no me autodefino feminista, no accedo, ¿no? 
o no tengo esto, pero soy parte de esa diversidad que lucha. Muchas gracias, Tassila. Um, we are out of time, so I'm just going to sum up really quickly some of the key things that we heard from this panel. And thank you so much to all of the panelists for sharing your experiences and for your wisdom. Um, one, feminist and women's rights and grassroots movements are the critical factor in driving change. Two, women's rights organizations need unrestricted, reliable, sustainable funding that's trust-based, that enables them to address the priorities that they identify as being needed to mobilize change. Three, we need to recognize our diversity to celebrate it, but also recognize how colonialism and racism show up, even within our own movements and intentionally redistribute power within them so that our agendas are truly intersectional. Um, and finally, the power of coalitions. It's this power of coalition building and collaborative action that we're really seeking to harness over the next five years with the Generation Equality Forums and the Ac Action Coalitions. And I really do believe that we have this unprecedented opportunity to be able to take on really critical challenges that are still facing women, girls, and gender diverse people around the world. Um, so let's go forward and, and do it. Thank you so much to everybody for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was Thank a pleasure. You. Gracias. Great job, Shannon. Thank you very much. Gracias. Gracias. Thank you. Gracias. Gracias, Doña Cecilia, Monica, maravillosa, Shannon, muy bien. Y Mercy, nos entendemos en los temas. Y con Quiteria, maravillosa, joven. Thank you. Me quedó preguntar I cuántos you. años tiene. <laughs> how old are you? Quiteria, how old are you? How old are you? Oh, okay, okay. I'm 29. Ah, yeah. 29. I was thinking 16. <laughs> Todavía es joven. Sí. Todavía okay. es joven. Thank you very Gracias. much. Thank you, Gracias. Shannon. Gracias. Thank you, Cecilia. Deliciosas las exposiciones. Okay, bye. Gracias. Bye. Thank you, Sam.